Prime Minister Hungo, thanks so much for joining us on G Zero World. Uh, thank you for, so much for, for having me in your show. So I, I, I thought I'd start with some good news, uh, which, of course, is this effort that you've put so much time into uh, that was called the Treaty uh, on the High Seas that I've just seen announced that apparently uh, we're talking about, what, 30 percent of international waters will be protected for biodiversity. That, given that we've never had an international agreement before, that sounds like some progress. So can you walk us through a little bit on what this treaty is meant to accomplish? I mean, the, uh, first of all, you have to understand that the, the problematic on water is so, is so complex. Now, more and more what we're trying to is to bring everybody, all uh, countries, to really um, adhere to the same way of um, addressing the, the same issue that we are facing while respecting the national circumstances that every government um, has, to, um, has to observe. And, and you have to look at that from a different dimension. And one important one is, you know, water can be um, used for peace. Um, at the same time, water can be a security issue um, between, um, between countries. So we need to keep in mind that um, a major challenge that we still have is the basic access to um, drinkable water and sanitation. Since 2015, we have made some progress. Um, um, we have, in the last eight years or seven, eight years, 600 uh, um, million people that now have access to um, drinkable water services. Um, at the same time, we need to keep in mind that we have two billion of people that still don't. Now, lack of access to clean water, uh, to drinkable water, how much of that is bad governance? How much of that is lack of resource? Where do you see the biggest challenges in the coming five, 10 years that you're trying to address? I think uh, we have a mix of, 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 of both. Um, bad management or bad uh, long-term planning is quite um, a serious issue, uh, not only planning for water, but also uh, uh, planning for uh, climate change. As a global society, we have taken water for granted, and that has to stop. Uh, water has to become um, everyone's business, and therefore the investment in water-related um, um, infrastructure for us is a uh, key. So you, we found ourselves um, kind of in the same storm, but not necessarily in the same boat. So it's going to be very, very important for us to use that water as um, a cross-cutting, let me put it this way, um, investment. In almost every region, um, you, you, you have countries that um, are having water stress. What makes it even worse is when you bring the agriculture dimension, we know that agriculture is more or less 75 percent the use of water. So addressing the issue of uh, practices, talking again about management or, or governance, um, improving um, practices in agriculture and making the agriculture practices climate friendly, climate sensitive and use of technology will help us particularly in countries that are water stressed. So when I look at Yemen, which has virtually no water access as a country itself. You've got a cholera uh, outbreaks and other significant disease because you don't have proper sanitation and water. How do we go about, I mean, if the water's not there, how are we going about addressing that? I mean, what does it mean to fix the water problem for a country like Yemen? How do you do that? Um, a country like Yemen, you really have to go with a, a multi-pronged approach. So we need to look, um, first of all, you can look at desalination because at least uh, Yemen, you have um, the, you have the sea uh, to desalinate it. Uh, I can talk later on on uh, Somaliland in uh, in Ethiopia, where you don't even have the access to uh, uh, um, to the uh, to the sea. Infrastructure is going to be key in Yemen. Investment in infrastructure and and technology, and you will have to consider desalination, but that is expensive. Uh, this is where also uh, official development um, uh, um, cooperation 
and um, comes to um, and to play. Sometimes it's true when you look at it. It's kind of okay. Where do we um, where do we start? But you just need to invest at the same time in a different uh, uh, in the in the different uh, uh, dimension. So how do you even measure success? We kind of all know like 1.5 degrees centigrade global warming. If we get past that, we've got serious problems. Everyone can watch that. Everyone can monitor it. What, what do we do when it comes to global water? Are there metrics like that that we can talk about that are easy to get people to understand? Yeah, uh, this is what uh, the UN Water, UN Water, which is a consortium of the uh, 30, 34 or 35 um, different UN agencies that are in working one way or the other in water, we do have uh, metrics like um, the the number of the the, the, the number of citizens that have access or not um, to drinkable water or to sanitation or the different type of uh, uh, component and the reuse of water and, and different type of uh, metrics. What is happening? Of course, is more difficult than the climate change, the 1.5 degree you gave, because most of people. Um, sometimes you might think that the, the major problem are in the big cities, but most of the, the, the poor people that are really suffering um, from um, water scarcity are in the rural area. And therefore, I must confess that the data and the quality of data is challenging on that. And what is also the metrics is also important is um, how some of the, the nexus between water and, cl and climate change. Uh, um, for example, when you look at some of the big rivers, uh, um, um, you know, some of them are losing 10%, 20%, you know, each year or some years of, of their reserve. And, and the ability to measure that and uh, more and more using um, artificial intelligence is also going to, um, to help us. And, and where do you see, I mean, given AI breakthroughs have been extraordinary in being able to assess very accurately, monitor, sensor, you know, sort of availability of resource and avoid waste. Where do you think that's going to have the biggest impact in the water crisis in the next five, ten years? Uh, I think it's in agriculture. Um, and the the uh, amount of water that is necessary and the ability to reuse um, um, the waste, uh, waste water. And... Um, the more technology AI also will, um, particularly the cost of the technology will go down and to help increase the, tra the basic transformation of the agriculture production that will help reducing the global waste, um, um, lost and waste. And you see the, the, the loss and waste in agriculture is around 30, 35 percent uh, of product and that will also help us to reduce the amount of water needed. I want to ask you another uh, climate related question because of course part of the reason why we've gotten ourselves in this fix of climate change is that people have treated carbon emissions as free, as costless. It's not a part of the problem. Part of the reason that we've gotten into a water challenge is because people in industry treat water as free. So uh, do we need to think about water as a global commodity? And if we did, uh, what would the price be? I mean, the price, uh, if we didn't, the price would be what we're already feeling. Um, I remember, and uh, I'm, I'm an old man, but I remember my first year in uni university, that's where in, in the late 70s, early, early 80s, where we start saying that, you know, we have to, to start considering water as a good, as a public good. Um, so, which is the um, first thing. Secondly, it is also important on, 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 on one hand and to make sure that while people have access to basic water services, we also um, take measure from a policy perspective, measure to avoid um, waste in the use of water. Because sometimes um, it's easy to think that okay water is free and I don't need to take care of it. Uh, the third dimension which is link is how do we f uh, fight against pollution at the country level, at the community level, be it in, in, in large um, cities or small cities. 
we really need to really ensure that we minimize the risk of pollution of, uh, of, of, of rivers. Now, how do you think about privatization uh, processes? We've seen in many cases, you know, where municipal plants suddenly are being taken over by companies. And is it driving more inequality? Is it creating efficiency and improving the water situation? Give, I know there's not a one, one quick answer to that, but you, you see the entire range. Generally speaking, how's that been working? I, I think well-managed is something that I, uh, I, I uh, encourage, but well-managed. Because it depends when you have in some countries when the government, um, in terms of governance, is very well organized, then the water services can be led by the government, by the public sector. But at the, at, at the same time, the policy, if well in place, and if it's privatized, privatized should not mean automatically that the price are going up. That's where I think the government had to set up the regulatory environment to ensure, for example, something that is very close to my heart, that the population that are at risk of being left behind, that are vulnerable, they still have that minimum quantity of water a month that is free or at a very, very, very cheap um, cost. And then um, privatization also means that the government uh, put in place um, means um, to control, to, to, to supervise and to inspect. Um, the quality of water and to ensure that the private company adhere to the agreed um, um, way forward and the existing policy. So I think well managed is, is not necessarily a bad thing. So when you look out in the next, let's say, 10, 20 years, do you think, I mean, the way that we presently use water as consumers, are we going to be able to maintain most of that use looking forward. When I look at climate change, I, it does make me wonder about to what extent your job is doable long term. No, I, I'm positive on medium long term that progressively our uh, habits, our way of life, we will adjust. Um, pro and when you think about it, we have been adjusting um, on, on, on that. You know, I'm sure in the morning before you shave, you want to make sure that you know, you don't let just the water <laughs> running um, 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 per se. And 20 years ago or so, maybe we don't even think about, um, um, about, about that. The other thing with, um, I am very confident also that with um, IoT, Internet of Things, um, it will also help us um, have, a, again, what we said about agriculture, kind of knowing the quantity you need. In our household um, daily management, the IoT, I believe, is going to also um, be helpful for us to, to change our habit and also the, 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 the consumption. Well, Prime Minister Hungbo, thank you so much for the work you're doing, and I, I appreciate you joining us today on G Zero World. Thank you so much uh, for having me on your show. Much appreciated.